Shalom, shalom, shalom. This is Rabbi Moshe Otero with uh, the Ways of Israel and doing a series called A Letter for the Ages, really dedicated to my sons, uh, Mayor David, Joshua, and David Joseph. It's my three sons. And in this third chapter of Egedet, the Egedet Rambam, Ramban Nachmanides, we talk about anger. Anger is a very vicious thing. Anger is the most serious character flaw which causes one to sin. Anger is compared to idolatry. Anger is not only an individual character, it's a barometer of personality as well. A wise man advised, before you take someone as your friend, observe him and when he is angered. His, un, his, his conduct under pressure will tell you volumes of his true nature. And this is also taught to us in Eruvim 65b or, or Sadikim chapter 12. When a person loses his temper, he loses his rationale and his rationale sense as well. The very basis of his relationship with God can become endangered for there is nothing to restrain him. Thus the Talmud in Shabbat 105b states that man who loses himself to anger is considered to have worshipped idols. When a person becomes unrestricted, his approach he approaches idolatry. Unable to think clearly, the man who is lost in fury loses perspective. The, crook, the crooked path appears straight and forbidden, and it seems permissible. Insults, quarreling, slander are no longer distanced from him. Although an otherwise sensitive man, the angered person may in his fury come and even humiliate others publicly. When no other guided by reason, even the most unspeakable acts can come within the reach. And this is also indicated in the Chofetz Chaim, Chovos Hashemira, regarding even the tongue. Quieted anger, its own reward. Elijah the prophet said, if you never come to anger, you will never come to sin. But Achot 29a. The Talmud in Pesachim, Pesachim 66b, stresses the consequences of falling prey to wrath. Whoever loses his temper, if he's a scholar, he will lose his wisdom. If a prophet, he will lose the Holy, his Holy Spirit. Indeed, the Gemara warns that a man unbridled fury can potentially destroy his life. That's true. Pesachim 113b. The Sefer Hasadim illustrates how one man who controlled his anger saved himself from destroying his family. Once there was a son who was extraordinarily respectful to his father. On his deathbed, the father said, My son, you honored me in my lifetime, and now... You must honor me after my death. I command you, if you should ever be overcome by anger, hold your anger in overnight. And after his father's death, the son was forced to embark on a prolonged journey which took him to distant lands for ten, tens of years. Unbeknownst to him, the wife he left behind was expecting his child. <clears throat> After years of absence, the husband returned home and announced, hoping joyously to surprise his wife. But as he approached his bedchamber, he saw his wife embracing a handsome young man, a stranger. The husband became fiercely jealous and reached out for his dagger when he suddenly remembered the pledge that he made to his father. He must hold in his rage overnight. The next day he was shocked to discover that the young man and his wife embrace was none other than his own son, the child that his wife had borne during his long absence. And the man was thus saved from tragically slaughtering his own family. A weighted balance. Now, the Rambam teaches, although these are the words of, the, of Nachmanides, in Hilchot Deot, chapter 2, that a man should balance his person his personality trait, avoiding extremes of any trait. He should endeavor to be strong, yet flexible, compassionate, yet firm. 
The Rambam knows, however, one exception to this rule. In reference to his anger, there is no middle way. A person must strive rather for an opposite extreme, avoiding wrath in situations where anger is indeed justifiable. Similarly, in Sefer Hamidot, Sha'ar Hasina, chapter 5, he writes, The traits of anger is undeniably evil. It is natural to wild and unclean animals, beasts and birds of prey. The angry man is similar to a viper whose food, the dust of the earth, is available to it wherever it travels. And so, too, the angry man may easily find cause to become abrasive, regardless of the situation which he finds himself in. Anger reaches outside itself. Anger does not remain inside itself. It affects those who live around it as well. King Solomon advises, do not associate with a man of temper and do not come near a man of wrath, lest you learn from his ways and endanger your souls. Proverbs 22, verse 24 through 25. Should I say anything else regarding the angry man? <clears throat> the anger is indeed contagious. By associating with a short-tempered person, one may also come to adopt his nature. Rabbi Hirsch, from the Wisdom of Mishle, of Proverbs, page 193, says this, And similarly, it's not only angry person himself who can be led to transgression, for, for once man anger can bring others to sin also. The Talmud in Gittin 6b says, explains, warns that a man should be exceedingly careful not to show anger in the presence of his wife, lest she comes to desecrate the Sabbath. Rashi explained that the wife who lives in fear of her husband's rage may, in order to protect himself, come to light the candle or finish cooking after the onset of Shabbat. Indeed, <coughs> in many ways, the repercussion of a man's anger reaches far beyond himself. And we end here with the third chapter of the letters of the Ramban to his children, as I am ending this video in merit, in, in sechut to my children, my sons in particular, since he was writing to his sons in these letters. Wonderful words to wake up in the morning to think. How deadly is anger? One person's anger destroyed many families. Many wars are started because of anger. Whoever flares up in anger is subject to discipline in Gehenna. No, I'm sorry, you don't get seven wives in the world to come. You get a place of torment and rectification. So we need to restrain our anger and learn how to do so. This is Rabbi Moshe Otero with the Ways of Israel. May God bless my sons, Mayor David, Joshua, and David Joseph. May God give them strength, gavura, to be able to live their lives according to Torah and Torah conduct. Shalom, shalom, and many blessings to all of you.